All right, you want to see a crazy project? We are going to add a speaker to this Roland P6 drum machine. Now, I love this drum machine, but I hate having to carry around headphones or earbuds every time I want to play it. I mean, yeah, you can also connect it over USB-C, but then you just are, you know, connecting it to a phone and, and there's tons of cables and stuff like that. Wouldn't it be much cooler if we could just fit a tiny little amplifier in there? Well, that's exactly what this circuit board is. It's the good old LM386 chip and a really small board. And look, there aren't even any components on the back. That's going to help with the mounting later, as you'll see. And it's smaller than this 10 peso coin. Now, how about finding out if there's any room inside the Roland Era P6? Fortunately, it comes apart really easily with six small Phillips screws and a screwdriver. Booyah! Look at that! Now, I would call this a pretty clean design. It looks like they've put all the digital stuff on this circuit board here and all the user interface over on here, which is quite extensive as there's a lot of inputs, a lot of buttons, and a lot of sensors, and a lot of dials and things up here. And then they're carried over through this ribbon cable, which looks like it has around 20 pins. And I'm guessing this big black thing is the rechargeable lithium battery, which makes this thing so delightfully portable. But the best news is it looks like there's tons of space right here and right there and right there. I'm pretty sure we can get this decent sized speaker in there like that and then get this amplifier in there as well. I don't know yet how I'd hold the speaker down, but I know I can hold this amplifier down with a piece of double sided tape. I also want to put this switch in there for the times that you don't want the speaker to be operating. And I'm going to try and put it in the side exactly where the other switch is for power on and off. Okay, so this part was kind of a hack. Uh, what I really wanted to do was find a place on the circuit board where the, um, the highest voltage would be when the thing is turned on, when the switch is on. Um, but I couldn't find it. I looked at a whole bunch of these chips. They have very difficult markings. I spent like an hour looking around on Google. And, uh, you know, I found like a, a static absorber. I found the Kodak, you know, a bunch of other stuff. But I couldn't find a battery management IC. So I took a rougher approach. Let's zoom in. Okay, so here you can see through the microscope where I've used the scalpel to scrape away at some of the, um, the covering on the circuit board where the positive terminal from the battery comes in. Now, like I said, that's not my favorite place, but it does have some advantages. Uh, specifically, um, I assume that the power for the digital ICs is going to get filtered somewhat after the battery management circuit. So if we take the power from, for the amplifier directly from the battery, then when we get those current spikes from the amplifier from making those transients for loud noises, they will have less of an effect on the more sensitive digital systems, I hope. You know, honestly, I could, since I couldn't find a battery management IC, it's possible there's not one and they're driving everything directly off the 3.6 volts coming out of this battery. I don't even know, but that's why this is an experiment and a hack. So let's find out. Okay, whew. believe me when I tell you that is some of the most uh, intense soldering I've done in a little while. I mean, it wasn't particularly difficult. It's just that I was worried that if I botched it up by shorting the soldering iron to anything... You know, there's so many components that I could just like short out if I dropped a blob of solder. I was pretty scared. Anyway, let's see what I did. This here is the LM386 amplifier board. And notice it's held down with double-sided tape. And then you see these two components on here. Those are two 4.7K resistors. I use those because we have stereo outputs going into the, into the headphone jack up here. And we only have a mono amplifier. So those make... a uh, a minimalist mixer. I chose the 4K value as a trade-off between not shorting the inputs together and not having too much input impedance on the LM386. All right, we're just going to turn it on in a minute, but I also wanted to include uh, this power switch. Notice that I wrote, routed the power switch through the ground instead of through the positive. I did that because this positive wire is oh so delicate. Over on the amplifier board, it's pretty much just a standard connection. But I have a, a blob scraped away that's much less than a millimeter squared on the main PCB. Uh, I should probably scratch that out. I would recommend making it a little bigger so you have a stronger connection there. Okay, let's give it a test. First, we have to turn on the drum machine. 
Ah, oh, jeez, did the battery die? First of all, let's go to a cool pattern. And press play. Ooh, I hear something. Yeah, I definitely hear a little... All right, yeah, I definitely hear the beat coming out. It's not extremely loud, but it's there. And we have a volume control on the LM386. It's also a little bit distorted too. Ah, I love that little filter. All right, cool. Now from a purely electronics standpoint, I'm gonna label this a success. Our next challenge is to make everything mechanically tight. That means we've gotta shorten a bunch of wires and drill a bunch of holes into the enclosure and mount some components. I still don't know how I'm gonna mount that speaker. This switch is gonna, I'm gonna mount it right next to the original switch there. And uh, yeah, woo, this is a pretty good result. And then I also need to drill a whole bunch of speaker holes in this so we can hear the sound coming out through the speaker. Okay, here's the result of drilling the two holes in the case. Ah, oh, man, that was another scary operation. Didn't want to mess up the unit. Yeah, I used a 330 seconds drill bit. I really wanted to use my 764ths, but couldn't find it. I believe I'm going to do this with 440 hardware, so we'll see in a minute. Uh, now I have to do the extra scary part, which is dremel out a whole bunch of space in there for the uh, power switch itself. I decided to clamp everything down for this because I'm going to need the extra stability. By the way, I was using the uh, hand drill before because the bit wouldn't fit into uh, my Dremel tool. But now that I've, uh, I've got the initial holes drilled, I've got an end mill in my Dremel tool and I'm going to mill it out with that. Okay, safety glasses on. Let's go. Oh God, did I mention the importance of tightening down the, uh, the lock, the shaft lock really tightly on the Dremel? I have a special wrench that I use just for this. All right, so now let's do a test closing. I know that since we put that switch in there, there's going to be a bunch of interference. There's this block here. This block, I'm not sure what the actual purpose is. I mean, I'm sure it gives a little extra stability to the whole thing. Um, but we're gonna have to we're gonna have to dremel out a bunch of this so that we can fit the additional switch in there. Okay, it looks like it needs just a little bit more before it'll close properly. Okay, yeah, that looks good now, I think. I have to get some of the other wires in place. Now for the speaker, I decided that a spot of this double-sided tape will be enough. I'll just put it on that big mount, that big metal part there, and that'll give it a little bit of lift off from the bottom, which will hopefully give it just a little bit more volume. I placed it over here so that hopefully it doesn't interfere with that little knobs board. Um, let's find out. But first I want to tape down this wire. I think a little Kapton tape is just the thing. Okay, so now we should have a much better idea if this fits without that cable flopping around. Yeah, it still feels like something's pushing a little bit like right there in the middle. So I guess I got to Dremel down just a bit more. Okay, let's give that a try. Okay, yeah, that actually snaps together. Um, do we dare turn it on and try? Okay, yeah, I can still hear it. It's awfully quiet because it's muffled. So now our next job is to make some holes in the, uh, in the box so that we can hear it. Yeah, pretty scary, huh? Making holes in the original box, but let's do it. Okay, so I made this as a drill template for the speaker holes I'm gonna make. I'm gonna tape down my template with double stick tape. That's just the best way I could find to, uh, to hold it in place while I drill. So I don't drill over the logo or the charge or go off of the edge. Okay, now for the really scary part where we're gonna drill right through the front of the case. Fortunately, there aren't any real components on that side. Let's give it a test and find out. Oh yeah, no problem. Piece of cake. We just, just made it. 
All right, so now let's patiently drill out the rest of these holes. Let's get that off and see. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice, we have a pretty regular, pretty speaker pattern. Okay, there we go. Let's clean up the back a little bit. And now I'd like to hear how it sounds uh, with the top on through our new speaker grate. Turn on the speaker. All right, yeah, th see that's totally good enough to actually work with. Woo! Okay, we got pretty far here. And let's put the screws back in. Okay, so there is the completed project. This is now a Roland Era P6 drum machine with a built-in speaker. And the only real changes we've made to the outward appearance are to put this little switch here to turn it on. It has the same direction as the main power switch. And then we've put these speaker holes in up here. Yeah, this is definitely the bomb. So I'm definitely going to charge this up and I'm going to take this for some walks and I'm really going to enjoy this. Okay, so this is Noah Vodder, DIY DSP. I just wanted to thank you for watching this video in which I modified this Roland Era P6 drum machine to have a built-in speaker. And um, thanks for supporting my Patreon. You know, um, Patreon is always where my videos go first. And a lot of times I don't even put things on YouTube that are on Patreon. There's, you know, that's where all my special stuff is. That's where all my, my raw material, um, things like that. And, you know, I have that $2 tier where it's just called a peek over the shop door. And that lets you, you know, that, that lets you see what's going on, what kind of things I'm working on. And it's a really affordable way to support the work. I use it to do things like pay for shipping and postage and all these parts that I buy or else memory cards and memory sticks, all kinds of little gizmos and even stuff like wire and solder and all kinds of other electronic parts. So I really appreciate those dollars coming in every month. Thank you very much for supporting me. And if you're not already a Patreon member, spend $2 on a peek through the shop window. All right, thanks. Bye.